So here's the truth you need to pack up and take home with you. You can't see the whole story, but God can. That's why you can't see the consequences for all your choices and you need His wisdom. On Monday, April 10th, 2017, a truck loaded high with mattresses made its way to the Kumasi Central Market to discharge its load. As the driver attempted to park near the market, a policeman stopped him. The policeman saw the overload and wanted to arrest the driver. Park well, he said. But the driver ignored the policeman and skirted around him and continued barreling down the road. As the driver went down the road with the load of mattresses, some market women saw him. They looked ahead and saw some electrical cables were hanging low along the road in the pathway of the oncoming truck. They realized that the high load of mattresses would collide with the low-hanging electrical cables and there would be a problem. Stop, they said. You're going to hit the electric cables. But the driver paid them no mind. I know more about driving than you do, he said, and continued on down the road. Well, sure enough, the load of mattresses came in contact with the low-hanging electrical cables and pulled the cables down. Sparks began to fly, and in an instant, the mattresses caught on fire. The fire spread, and a five-story building caught fire. A bank, shops, and goods worth millions of CDs all caught fire. By the time the fire service had arrived and put out the raging inferno, the truck had burnt to the ground, the mattresses were ashes, and the five-story building was destroyed. One defiant act of foolishness had wiped out a section of the market, costing millions of CDs and impacting countless lives. There's a powerful lesson for all of us in the tragic but true story of the Kumasi Central Market fire in April 2017. When men refuse to listen to wisdom, it's like a spark that quickly sets things on fire. When men refuse to connect consequences with their choices, it affects innocent lives and spreads out of control. When men reject wisdom, disaster is never far away. That's why when faced with choices, you need wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to see the consequences of your choices. Wisdom is the ability to discern between good and evil. Wisdom is what's required to make better choices, to make a better life, and to make a better you. So let's discover wisdom, the key to a better you. But before we do, let's pray. Almighty Father, we thank you that you have planted us by streams of living water so that we can bear fruit, send down roots, and grow for your glory. And that water that you give us to grow by is wisdom. So today, teach us. Impart knowledge and understanding and wisdom to us. We submit to you and we bind every voice of the enemy that would come to deceive or disturb or distract us. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I loose the Spirit of God, the Spirit of wisdom, to fill our hearts and minds. Give us the grace we need to embrace wisdom and obey you, that at the end of the day, your name will be glorified and our lives are transformed. We thank you that you're helping us. In Jesus' name, amen. And everybody said amen. I want to invite you to take a moment, join your faith with mine right now. Put your hand on your chest and pray along with me. Lord Jesus, speak to my heart. Change my life. Manifest your glory in me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, good morning once again. Welcome to Agape House. You picked a great place and a great time to be here with us, for God is taking us on a journey to teach us how to have a better life by building better choices so that we can develop a better you. If you believe it, say amen. But the fact is a better life requires that you become a better you. And things don't make life better. Life becomes better when you become better. But you can only build a better you when you make better choices. For the fact is, you make choices, and your choices make you. And in order to make better choices, you need wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to make the right choice. If you want to build a better you, you need to build a wiser you. 
To help us learn that truth today, we printed sermon notes. They look like this. They're inside your bulletin, so go ahead and take them out now. If you're joining online, you can download the sermon notes free of charge from our website and our social media pages. And as you take your notes, let's follow along together and discover three reasons wisdom makes a better you. There at the top of your notes and on the screen ahead of you is our scripture text for today found in Proverbs 16, 16. One simple verse. It's on your notes. It's on the screen, but the Word of God has the most impact when it's in your heart and on your lips. So I want to invite everybody to read it out loud together with me. Are you ready? Let's read it with feeling and with faith. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. How much better to get wisdom than gold, to choose understanding rather than silver? May the Lord bless the reading of His Word to your heart today in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Over and over in the Bible, God tells us the valuable resource that wisdom is. He tells us that wisdom and understanding are better than anything. In this verse, he says it's better to get wisdom than gold. Imagine that. And better to have understanding rather than silver. And the reason why wisdom is so valuable is because when wisdom guides your choices, you will always make the right choice. So today, let me give you three reasons wisdom makes a better you. And here's your first reason. Wisdom has a better source. Everybody say source. In order to make a better you, you need wisdom because wisdom has a better source. The fact is wisdom comes from God. And the Bible tells us in Proverbs 2, 6, for the Lord grants wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. The fact is we all have a little wisdom. We all have a little knowledge, but only God has all knowledge. God sees everything. God knows everything and God answers everything. And because he has all knowledge, he alone can give Give us the wisdom that we need to make the right choices. See, here's the truth you need to get deep in your heart today. Wisdom is the ability to see the consequences of your choices. And the fact is, no matter how great you are, no matter how educated you are, none of us have the ability to see down the road and predict the future of what consequences will come from our choices. We can't tell what will happen every time. But God has that ability. For Isaiah 46, 9 and 10, he says, I am God. There is no one like me. Before something even happens, I announce how it will end. So God knows the end from the beginning. God knows the consequences or the outcome of your choices. But we don't know, so we need wisdom. It's easy for all of us as human beings to look back after the fact in hindsight and see whether our choices were good or bad. But wisdom is the ability to connect which choices we will make and where it will take us in life. For example, it may seem at the time that it was a wise investment to put your money into men's gold. But now in hindsight, looking back, we realize that that was not a wise decision. Somebody say amen. It may have seemed like a good idea to go and see what happened at the road accident on Thursday, January 20th at Apiate. On that fateful day, a truck loaded with mining explosives collided with a motorbike, sparking a fire. Initially, news reports say people rushed to the scene to see what had happened and to try to help put out the fire. But after the fire had raged out of control for 20 minutes, it eventually reached the explosives and the resulting blast killed 13 people, leveled buildings, and destroyed Apiate. Now, everyone can look back and know it was the wrong choice to rush towards the accident. See, we don't see the whole story. We don't see the end from the beginning. We don't know till the end what will happen. And sometimes it takes years or even a lifetime for the outcome of our choices to be revealed. That's what we can learn from the amazing true story of the handwritten note of the great physicist Albert Einstein. Over 100 years ago, Albert Einstein visited Tokyo, Japan, and stayed at the Imperial Hotel. He had just won the Nobel Prize, and he had gone to Japan to make a series of lectures. But when Albert Einstein got to the Imperial Hotel, a Japanese porter carried his suitcase up to the room, and suddenly Einstein realized he did not have any Japanese currency to dash the porter. So instead, Einstein sat down and wrote a handwritten note on how to find happiness. Then he gave the note to the porter and told him to keep it because someday it might be valuable. 
Well, you can imagine how the porter might have felt. He was hoping for a little folding money, and all he got was a handwritten note on how to find happiness. I'll tell you what will make me happy, he might have said. Give me some money. He might have been disappointed. He might have been offended. But for some reason, that porter did what Einstein said. He kept the note. Later on, he passed it to someone else in his family who passed it to someone else. Five years ago, the grandnephew of the original porter sold Einstein's handwritten note for 1.56 million U.S. dollars. How to find happiness, indeed. Who knew at the time that a handwritten note by this crazy scientist would fetch 1.56 million U.S. dollars? When Einstein gave that porter the note, it seemed worthless. But today we look back and say that man was truly wise. So here's the truth you need to pack up and take home with you. You can't see the whole story, but God can. That's why you can't see the consequences for all your choices and you need his wisdom. For Proverbs 28, 26 says, those who trust in their own insight are foolish, but anyone who walks in wisdom is wise. When you act out of your own heart and your own understanding, you'll make bad choices. For not only do we not know what the future brings, not only do we not see the consequences of our choices, but the Bible also tells us we deceive ourselves. We talk ourselves into doing stupid things. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? In other words, we deceive ourselves. We talk ourselves into believing something that is not true, and then we make bad choices. And consider that the Bible says, who can understand it? We deceive ourselves, and then we say to ourselves, I don't understand why I did that. Maybe you've known someone who was successful and intelligent and educated, but you watched them making foolish decisions and you thought, I can't understand how such a smart person could make such a dumb decision. But the fact is you can't understand it. You can't understand the heart because the heart is deceitful. The heart wants what it wants. The heart wants its own happiness and the heart will lie to you to get its own way. We need wisdom because wisdom helps us choose what's healthy instead of what we think will make us happy. And that brings us to our second truth today. Wisdom has a better strategy. Everybody say strategy. Wisdom makes better choices because it comes from a better source. And wisdom makes better choices because it has a better strategy for decision making. In fact, wisdom has three strategies I want to share with you. First of all, the first strategy is wisdom connects truth with action. Everybody say truth with action. That's why the Bible says in Proverbs 13, 16, wise people think before they act. Fools don't and even brag about their foolishness. So a wise man thinks before he acts, but a fool acts before he thinks. This reminds me of the story of the thief who went into the shell shop at East Legon to steal some money. He went in late one night, and he went up to the cashier to the till, and he put a 50 Ghana CD note on the counter. Then he said to the young cashier, open the till. I want you to make change for me. When she opened the till, then the thief pulled out a knife and said, give me all the money in the till. Well, the young lady packed all the money in a bag and gave it to him, and in his haste, the thief wanted to leave in a hurry not to get caught. He left the Ghana 50 CD on the, on the uh, table. Hey! He left the note on the table. When he got home, he counted the money. It was 42 Ghana CDs, 56 Pesos. <laughs> hey! Charlie, you left 50 Ghana, you took 42, 56. It's easy to laugh at the thief and his foolishness. He acted without thinking, but how many of us have done the same thing? How many of us have made hasty decisions plunging ahead without thinking about what we were doing? How many of us have spoken harsh words we later regretted? How many of us have jumped to conclusions based on something we heard without bothering to stop and find the facts? I learned this lesson the hard way years ago in Nigeria. 
One day I was in my office at our Bible college and one of my employees came in, a pastor that I trusted. And he sat down and said, Reverend, I want to share some concerning news with you. And he began to report other people in the organization. He claimed they were stealing money. And I didn't bother to find out the facts. I got angry right away and I reacted. I said, I'm going to deal with that person and I'm going to find out what's going on. But when I went to investigate and looked into the matter, I discovered I had judged Unfairly, the facts told a different story. Only later did I find out that the man who came to first report was actually the one stealing. And he was trying to cover his crime. Hey. Sadly, we often make decisions based on emotion rather than wisdom. We hear something about someone and we immediately react. We read something on the internet. We watch a video on YouTube and we respond hastily. But a wise man thinks before he acts because a wise man connects truth with action. That brings us to our second strategy. Wisdom connects choices with consequences. That's what the Bible tells us in Galatians 6, 7, and 8. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. In other words, your choices today affect your outcome tomorrow. And failing to understand this strategy will lead you to make a lot of unwise choices. In fact, millions of people are being led astray today because they fail to acknowledge the truth that choices have consequences. My heart is broken by what I see in the church around the world today because we are failing to understand the impact of this truth. We've put such a spiritual emphasis on everything. We're neglecting practical wisdom and truth. In fact, many today are so spiritually minded they're of no earthly good. Now listen, don't get me wrong. I believe in spiritual realms. I believe in the supernatural. I believe in spiritual warfare. I believe it is possible that some of your problems are caused by spiritual forces attacking you. I believe that we need to wage spiritual warfare. I believe we need to bind it loose, reverse the curse, and cast out the devil. But none of that takes away from the fact that you also are commanded by God to crucify your flesh. God gave you power over the enemy and truth to live by, and you need both. Your problem at work may be a demonic attack from your jealous coworker, or it may be you always come late and you refuse to follow instructions from your boss. The problem in your marriage may be a jealous woman trying to destroy it, or it may be your mean, rude, and nasty. You won't cook for him and you won't sleep for him. Hello? Hey! Your financial problem may be your auntie in your village cursing your money. Or it may be you don't pay your tithe, you spend too much, and you don't go by a budget. Tell your neighbor he's talking about you. Right now, our beloved currency, the Ghana CD, is losing value every day. We've borrowed too much, and now we're suffering the consequences. That's not a political statement, it's fact. Excessive borrowing didn't begin with NPP. I'm not blaming anybody, but all of us. We've borrowed too much. Do not blame the devaluation on COVID or the war in Ukraine. Do not blame the devaluation on other things. We borrowed too much money. And let me be frank. Prayer and spiritual warfare will not save the Ghana CD unless we change our choices. Unwise choices have led us into this mess, and we need wise choices to lead us out. Everybody say wisdom. Yeah. See, too often we rely upon spiritual answers to our problems. We want the problem to be spiritual, and we want God to do something about it. Because if the problem is spiritual, and we need a spiritual answer, then I don't need to change. If we can blame someone else, somewhere else, then God has to deal with it, and I can continue to do whatever I like, and God has to solve the problem. But when I accept that my problems are a consequence of my choices, then I have to change. I believe in the spiritual realm, but I believe most of your problems are not spiritual in nature. Most of your problems come from bad choices you've made. Tell your neighbor he's talking about me. 
A few years ago, a lady wrote the famous Christian counselor, Dr. James Dobson, and she said this, and I quote, four years ago, I was dating a man and I became pregnant. I was devastated. I asked God, why did you allow this to happen? Excuse me, sister? <laughs> did you study biology in high school? Because that's how it works, you know. I mean, God created man and woman, and when they get together, it usually ends up in pregnancy. Uh, so why are you blaming God? He wasn't in bed with you. You want God to magically wave his hand when you're fornicating and not get pregnant. Then you want God to magically wave his hand when you're married and suddenly you have children. Excuse me, I have news for you. God is not your houseboy. If you break the law of God, the law of God will break you because choices have consequences. That's why the Bible says in Ephesians 5.15, be very careful. Careful, oh, be careful, careful, Pacho, be careful. Be very careful. Tell your neighbor, be very careful. Be very careful then how you live, how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise. In fact, much more space is taken up in the Bible telling us how to live than is taken by how to overcome the devil. And the reason for that is because much more of our problems come from how we live, by our choices, than by Satan's schemes. The Bible spends more time telling you how to behave than it tells you how to overcome the boss who hates you and the sister who's jealous of you and the auntie in the village cursing you because your choices impact you more than anything anyone else does to you. Don't blame someone else for your bad decisions. You chose, you suffer the consequences. And while God is gracious and merciful and he forgives us, you don't automatically erase the consequences when you repent. If you go out this week and commit fornication, God forbid. I said God forbid. Somebody say amen. Are you awake today? If you go out this week and you commit fornication, God forbid, and you become pregnant, you can come back here next Sunday. You can cry and repent. You can ask God to forgive you. God will forgive you. We will forgive you. And you will still be pregnant. <laughs> Forgiveness doesn't make God unpregnant you. You still end up with the consequence of your choice. If you go out this week and you decide to buy a lot of things and you borrow money to buy things you don't need to impress people you don't like and then you wake up on Saturday morning and say, oh my God, I'm heavily in debt and you repent, God will forgive you but you will still owe the money and you'll have to begin making choices to reduce your expenses and work harder to pay off your debt. That's why Paul says, be careful how you live. The choices you make matter. They impact your life more than anything else. So be careful. Be deliberate. Think about it. Plan. Get wisdom. See, the fact is God loves you. He does not want you to suffer the consequences of your sin. He doesn't want you to have the punishment that comes with sin. He doesn't want the wrong choices to impact your life. So he pleads with you today, get wisdom. Because to get better consequences, you need to make better choices. Put in more care and you'll get better results. You can put in more care when you put more thought and care and planning into your Choices, And that brings us to the third strategy. Strategy number three, wisdom connects past experience with future progress. Have you ever heard the phrase, experience is a great teacher? And there's a lot of truth in that. We can learn from our experience. When we make a stupid mistake and things don't turn out well, we can learn from that. But here's the truth you need to pack up and take home with you. Experience alone doesn't make you wiser. Evaluated experience makes you wiser wiser. That's why throughout the Bible, God commands us to evaluate and to test our decisions. In 2 Corinthians 13, 5, he says, examine yourselves to see if your faith is genuine. Test yourselves. Turn your notes over to page two and think about what God is saying. He says, you need to give yourself an examination. You need to test yourself. The funny thing is, we often test ourselves in different areas. We look at our finances and examine our bank account to make sure we can pay our debts. We test our health and check our blood pressure to make sure we don't die from a heart attack. 
We examine our cars to make sure they have oil and water. But most of us never take time to examine our choices to see if we're on the right path. We just keep making the same mistake over and over again. But the Bible tells us in Proverbs 14, 8, people are wise and understanding when they think about the way they live. Let's read that verse together. Three, two, one, go. People are wise and understanding when they think about the way they live. So when was the last time you sat down and thought about the way you live. We need wisdom to guide our choices because wisdom has a better strategy to make better choices, to make a better life, to make a better you. And when you choose wisdom, you'll have success. That's our third truth today. Wisdom has better success. Everybody say success. Hear the word of the Lord to you today from Proverbs 3, 13 to 18. Joyful is the person who finds wisdom the one who gains understanding. For wisdom is more profitable than silver. Hey, her wages are better than gold. Wisdom is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. She offers you long life in her right hand and riches and honor in her left. She will guide you down delightful paths. All her ways are satisfying. Wisdom is a tree of life to those who embrace her. Happy are those who hold her tightly. Hey, wow, if this were the only passage in the Bible about the rewards of wisdom, this one passage alone would make it motivating enough for you to seek wisdom more than anything else. If this were the only promise of reward, these rewards alone will make me say I must get wisdom. But the fact is, this is one passage of many in the Bible where God says over and over again, there are rewards of wisdom. Proverbs 4, 6 to 8 says, don't turn your back on wisdom for she will protect you. Love her and she will will guard you. You don't need a bodyguard or razor coil. You need wisdom. Forgetting wisdom is the wisest thing you can do. And whatever else you do, develop good judgment. If you prize wisdom, she will make you great. Embrace her and she will honor you. So the path of protection and the path of greatness is found in wisdom. Everybody shout wisdom. Proverbs 8, 11 says wisdom is far more valuable than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with it. What do you desire? desire today? Do you desire wealth? Do you desire power? Do you desire fame? Do you desire happiness? Wisdom is better than all of those. Everything you're praying for today cannot be compared with wisdom. Shout wisdom. Proverbs 9, 11 to 12 says, wisdom will multiply your days and add years to your life. If you become wise, you will be the one to benefit. If you scorn wisdom, you will be the one to suffer. And wisdom brings you long life. And wisdom blesses you with happy days. Somebody shout wisdom. Proverbs 24, 14 says, wisdom is sweet to your soul. If you find it, you will have a bright future. Hey! A better life and your hopes will not be cut short. If you believe God's word and you believe what I just read, then the most important element for a better you is wisdom. For wisdom brings honor and riches and life and prosperity and peace. Wisdom brings joy and good relationships. Wisdom brings success. It wipes away tears. There's no regret, no apology, no turning back with wisdom. It will make your path bright and your future ecstatic. You will get good benefits because that's what God wants for you. He wants you to have wisdom. And in light of those facts, there's one question we should ask for every decision this year. There's one question we should bear on every decision, every invitation, and every relationship, and it's this. What's the wise thing to do? When faced with a choice, don't ask yourself, what do I feel like? When faced with a choice, don't ask yourself, what are my friends saying? When faced with a choice, don't ask yourself, what have I done in times past? When faced with a choice, don't ask yourself, what is everybody else doing? Ask yourself, what's the wise thing to do? Because for wisdom to take effect in your life and for you to get the reward of wisdom, you have to begin to practice wisdom every day. You have to start making wise choices. You have to commit to wisdom. That's the lesson we can learn from the powerful true story of an American man named Maury Davis. Maury Davis was just 
18 years old on January 27, 1975, when he walked into a house in Irving, Texas, USA, and for no reason at all killed a lady there. He now says he was on drugs and under the influence of the devil, but at the time there was no reason, just a senseless act of murder, when he took the life of 54-year-old Ella Jo Lyles. Murray Davis had made a choice that would forever change his life. There was no going back. You can't undo a murder. There was no way to bring Ella Jo Lyles back to life, no way to give her back to her only son, no way to restore or replace her love. One choice, one decision. And choices have consequences. Murray Davis was sentenced to 20 years in prison. His name, his reputation, his life were ruined, his future shattered from one choice. Murray Davis could not change his past, but Jesus can take death and turn it into life. Jesus can resurrect even bad choices that have led to a ruined life. And no matter how many bad choices you make, Jesus can offer you a new life, a new chance, a new hope. For when you turn to him, Jesus gives you a new set of choices. Murray Davis took that second chance at life and turned to Jesus. He couldn't undo the wrongs he'd done, but he started from that moment in prison and began making new choices. He gave his life to Christ. He started attending church in prison. He started praying and reading his Bible. When eventually he was released from prison, he continued to follow the path of God's wisdom. He got married, had a family, and eventually answered the call and went into ministry. Eventually, he became the pastor of a church called Cornerstone Church in Nashville, USA, and built the church from 250 people to nearly 5,000 in weekly attendance. Maury Davis has reached millions of people on television, online, around the world. Unwise choices led him into prison, and wise choices led him out. And the same is true for you. You can't undo your wrong choices. You can't go back and reverse your unwise decisions most of the time. But you can make new choices, better choices, wiser choices. If you made unwise choices and walked yourself into a mess, then today begin to make wise choices, follow Jesus, and walk your way out of a mess. For when you do, you make a better you. So, Here's the conclusion of the whole sermon. Seek wisdom. To build a better you, seek wisdom. For wisdom makes better choices, and better choices make a better you. But wisdom itself is a choice. That's what our scripture text says in Proverbs 16, 16. How much better to get wisdom than gold? To choose. Everybody say choose. To choose understanding rather than silver. So wisdom is a choice. You can choose today to be wise. And that's good news for everybody because if wisdom is a choice, it's available to each and every one of us. It doesn't matter your past or your education or your family or your talent. If you can choose wisdom, then every one of us can get wisdom. In fact, that's what the Bible says in James 1.5. If any of you, whether you're rich or poor, male or female, black or white, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all, to everybody, young and old, without finding fault, and it will be given to him. God promises wisdom to anyone and to everyone who asks him, who seeks it. He won't condemn you for your lack of wisdom. He will grant it to you when you ask. And when you think about it, God has already given you the means of getting wisdom. He's already placed right at your hand the opportunity to be wise. Wisdom can be obtained simply by studying the Bible. It doesn't come by impartation. It comes by acquisition. It doesn't come by laying on of hands. It comes by seeking the Lord. For Proverbs 9, 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. God is the source of all wisdom, and He wants to give it to you so you can make better choices and build a better life when you build a better you. Not only has he given you his word, but he's given you a church right here where we teach the wisdom of God every week. You can get connected under wise and godly men and women who will give you wise counsel. You can seek it in his word. You can come near wise servants. For Proverbs 20, 18 says, plans succeed through wise counsel. Don't go to war without 
wise advice. Right here at Agape House, you can come and commit every week. Commit to a fellowship group. Commit to a ministry. Commit to men and women of God and submit to them for we watch over your souls and we're here to give you wisdom. You can choose wisdom today through the Word of God. You can choose wisdom by diligently coming to church and hearing the Word and submitting to wise counsel. It will take effort, but the effort is worth it. For Proverbs 4, 7 says, wisdom is supreme. Therefore, get wisdom. Though it cost all you have, get understanding. Wisdom is supreme. No matter what it takes, get wisdom. For wisdom makes better choices, and better choices makes a better you, a wiser you. It's you, but a better you, a wiser you. It's you, 2.0. Thank you for joining us today for Truth For Today with Pastor Whitcomb. I trust that the message and ministry is a blessing to you. On behalf of Pastor Whitcomb and all of us here at Agape Gospel Mission, we say thanks for tuning in today. We look forward to being with you again next week for Truth For Today. Until then, stay blessed and keep walking with Jesus.